It's no secret that the U.S. prison system is broken. We have the largest prison population in the world with over 2.3 million people. We lead with the highest rate of incarceration, followed by countries like Russia and Rwanda. Conditions are so dire that they constitute cruel and unusual punishment in California, according to the Supreme Court. We double bunk our inmates, we triple bunk them, and we have them sleep in hallways and gymnasiums, even though states and the federal government spend a whopping $70 billion a year in incarceration. But imagine the possibility that over 1.1 million inmates are in prison, but shouldn't be, despite their crimes. These are the mentally ill. According to the Department of Justice, more than half of our inmates suffer from a serious mental illness. Um, because of decades of deinstitutionalization and aggressive drug policies, today more Americans receive mental health treatment in prisons than they do in hospitals or treatment facilities. Diseases as common as depression, trauma, and phobia, they often aren't caught in prison reception screenings. And once in prison, the chances of getting adequate treatment plummet because the system doesn't have the capacity for it and because the environment is more punitive than rehabilitative. What I propose is that we use innovative, predictive technologies to help diagnose these inmates and to rehabilitate them. Methods like algorithms, modeling, machine learning, these are already being used to assess and predict specific types of behavior in people. Recently, a mental health care app has been developed by a team of psychiatrists for the general public. So if we use all of these methods and apply them to prison, they can help make really crucial diagnoses, and they can improve our decision making, our data, and our outcomes. And we can do this by providing media devices like tablets that have been donated or repurposed to our low-risk inmates. And among other things, this can teach them to build and maintain social networks and remind them of the broader society that they're a part of and that they can one day permanently re-enter. This doesn't replace one-on-one -on -one counseling or clinical judgment. And we still have to reform the entire system. We still have to change incentives in an industry that is rapidly privatizing. But we must change course, because the US has to preserve the safety and the dignity of all of its citizens. Thank you.